Welcome back. Today on our journey through the Bible, we will learn about Jesus' parables. The Messiah. Our memory verse comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Parables. The theme verse for this aspect of the Messiah's life comes from Matthew 13, 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Soil A large group of people followed Jesus to hear him teach. So Jesus went into a boat, and from the boat he told them this parable. A farmer went out to plant seeds. He planted the seeds in a broadcasting manner, and seeds went everywhere. Some fell by the side of the road, and birds ate them up. Some fell on hard, stony ground with very little soil. Those sprung up quickly, but because they didn't have much earth to form a solid root, they were scorched and burned up in the sun. Some fell among wild thorns, and as the plants began to shoot, the thorny weeds choked them out. Finally, another set fell on good healthy soil with no wild weeds. Those seeds shot up and grew, producing good fruit, some a hundred times, some sixty times, and some thirty times as much. Then Jesus explained the meaning of the parable. The seeds represent the word of God. When someone hears it and doesn't understand, that person is like the roadside soil. The wicked one, like the birds, quickly comes and takes the truth away that it can't take root in that person's heart. The stony ground with limited soil is like a person who receives the word of God quickly with joy and enthusiasm. But when trials and persecution come, because the word was not properly established in them, they become offended by God's word, and it dies, producing no fruit. The thorny ground is like a person who receives the word of God, but they get distracted by all that this world has to offer. They prefer to have earthly riches and prioritize the various concerns of this life. Therefore, the word of God gets choked and produces no fruit. The good soil represents those who receive the word of God, hears and understands it. The word becomes deeply embedded in their hearts and flourishes, producing vast amounts of fruit as a witness to the world. Wheat and Tares Following the parable of the different types of soils, Jesus told another parable comparing the kingdom of heaven to a man planting a field with wheat. The man planted his field with good wheat seeds. While he and his servants slept, an enemy came and planted tares, contaminating his field. When the plants began to shoot and produce fruit, the man's servant observed that all the plants were not wheat. But the tares so closely resembled the wheat, they didn't know what to do. The servants came and inquired where the tares came from because the master had only planted good seeds. The master told his servants that an enemy had done this. So they asked if they should go and gather up the weeds. The master said not yet, because they would risk pulling up some of the good wheat with the tares. He instructed them to let both plants grow together until harvest time, 
At harvest time, they would gather the tares first and bundle them together to be burned. Then they would gather the wheat into the barn. Again, Jesus explained this parable of the wheat and the tares. The master that planted the wheat represented himself, the son of man. The field represented the world. The good seeds are the obedient people that belong to the kingdom of God, and the tares are the disobedient people serving the wicked one. The enemy that planted the tares is the devil. The harvest time is the end of the world. At the end of the world, Jesus will send his servants, the angels, to gather out of his kingdom everything that is offensive and those who live sinfully. They will be thrown into a furnace of fire where there will be great lamenting. Then the righteous will shine brightly in God's kingdom. Mustard Seed Leaven Jesus compared the kingdom of heaven to a grain of mustard seed. He said that the kingdom of heaven was like a single grain of mustard seed that was planted in a field. The mustard seed is one of the smallest of all seeds. However, when it is planted, it germinates and grows into a large tree in which birds can make a home. Jesus also compared the kingdom of heaven to leaven that a woman kneaded into three measures of flour until the dough was leavened. Like a germinating seed and a little piece of yeast in flour, the kingdom of heaven in this earth may seem small, but it is filled with great power to supply the needs of all who come. Hidden Treasure, Pearl of Great Price, the net. Jesus compared the kingdom of heaven to a hidden treasure in a field and a pearl of great price. A man went exploring a field one day and found a great treasure in the field. Excitedly, he hid the treasure again and went home and sold everything he had and bought the field. Similarly, a merchant went looking for the best pearl. After traveling far and near, he found the best pearl and sold all he had to buy it. The kingdom of heaven is the treasure and the pearl. Those who would inherit the kingdom need to forsake all that this world has to gain the heavenly treasure. In similar form to the parable of the wheat and the tares, Jesus compared the kingdom of heaven to a dragnet. The fishermen cast the net into the sea, capturing every type of fish in the waters. When the net is full, they pull in the net into the shore and separate the good fish from the bad, throwing the bad fish away. Jesus explained that this is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will separate the wicked from the obedient and will throw the evil ones into the fiery furnace, where there will be great lamentations. Neighborly Samaritan One day when Jesus was teaching, a lawyer trying to trap him asked Jesus what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus asked him what was written in the law. He answered that the law stated that they should love God with all their heart, soul, strength, and mind, and their neighbor as themselves. Jesus affirmed his answer and told him to do this and he would live. Then the lawyer asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? To this Jesus responded with this parable. A man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho and was attacked by thieves who robbed him took his clothes and beat him to near death and left him on the roadside. Shortly after this, a priest came through that path, and when he saw the man on the ground, he walked on the other side of the road. Then a Levite came walking by, looked at the man, and passed by on the other side as well. Soon after, a Samaritan came through that path on his journey and saw the man. He had compassion on the man and stopped. 
He poured ointment and bandaged the man's wounds. Then he placed the man on his animal and took him to the nearest guest house and cared for him. The next day the Samaritan needed to leave, so he gave the keeper of the guest house some money to care for the man, promising that when he returned he would pay any extra costs the host may have incurred. Then Jesus asked the lawyer, which of the men was a neighbor to the victim? The lawyer responded that the man who showed mercy was his neighbor. To which Jesus answered, Go, and do thou likewise. Now it's time for our activity. First question, what did the different soil types represent? Okay, the roadside represented a hard heart that does not understand. The rocky soil represents a hastily receptive heart with no root. The thorny soil represented a heart caught up with earthly cares. And the good soil represents a fully receptive heart. Next question, who is your neighbor? That's right, your neighbor is anyone in need of your help. Last question. Name three things to which Jesus compared the kingdom of heaven. Jesus compared the kingdom of heaven to many things, but three of them are the mustard seed, leaven in flour, and a hidden treasure in a field. Now write or say the memory and theme verses from memory. Yes, Jesus loves Next time we'll read more yes, of Jesus' parables. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me for the Bible tells me so.